good to kick in. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Midcurrent Gear Drop Live, where we talk to fly fishing product designers about their latest gear live on the air. I'm Marshall Cutchin, publisher of Midcurrent. Hey, everyone, and I'm Scott Nielsen, Midcurrent's Chief Inspiration Officer. And we're really excited to bring you insider access uh, to some of the latest in fly fishing gear and equipment. Uh, today, we're joined by Jeff Patterson from Able Automatics, which is based in Montrose, Colorado. So uh, Jeff is the Executive Vice President of Able Reels and both the Director of Sales for both Able and Ross. And today we're gonna to be talking with Jeff about the Via Fly Reel, which has uh, been just released last fall and uh, got a lot of excitement around it. So uh, before we start and jump in, we wanna remind you that if you're watching live on Facebook, uh, can comment, add questions. We'll be sure to get some of those, uh, add those in the chat window. You can also invite your friends to join us on Facebook. And if you're watching the recorded version, welcome. Glad to have you. <laughs> so, Jeff, we're going to just dive right in here. So you've been with uh, Abel, the, the brand, for is it about 30 years now. Uh, Question it, I guess uh, 1992 is uh, when I first started working here. Okay, gotcha. Did you ever think you'd be part of a brand for, for that long? Uh Boy, when it came to fly fishing, I was sure hoping so, and it's, it's worked out really well. I had no idea where the path would go, and uh, I did not uh, envision ending up in Montrose, Colorado back then from Southern California, but uh, I'm sure glad it's worked out that way. Awesome. Very cool. Thanks again for making time to chat with us. And uh, like we mentioned, we're going to be talking about the VIA, which uh is again a kind of relatively new uh, reel for for Abel, and uh, I've got one of them here. We're going to be kind of diving into this, asking Jeff some questions. Uh, again, if you have any questions that you want us to answer, feel free to add them in the uh, the comments below. But uh, so Jeff, so what was the intention behind uh, launching the Via? Well, the Via was uh, kind of a more of a modern design for Abel, maybe over years past. Uh, we wanted to have a, a really easy to adjust disc drag type of system. Uh, pr prior to that, we came out with a, a new TR model, which was a click drag, but we felt it was to time to come up with something a little bit different than maybe the cork drag that uh, Abel has always been known for. We came out with a, a really cool line of seal drag, freshwater and saltwater reels. But this one was a little bit different. Uh, we actually borrowed some of the things that we've learned from the Ross brand as well with, with Abel on this particular reel. And we didn't exactly set out to make a less expensive model off the bat, but that was kind of where we were hoping our own internal cost would allow us to get to. So instead of having like a $700 you know, seal drag reel, we were able to come in with a $500 adjustable drag reel with the Vias. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, the VIA, what, what is this kind of designed for? What particular uses would uh, somebody use a VIA for? Well, we only made it in three sizes. We did a 4.5, a 5.6, and a 7.8. And man, they're just designed to be used wherever you want them to be in that range. It's a great trout reel. It's a great light saltwater reel. You kind of alluded to one, uh, uh, some awards before. It actually got best new saltwater reel at the show last fall when we introduced it. That was obviously for the 7.8 size. So it's a great light saltwater reel. Um, it's not designed to be catching 100 pound tarpon. It's it's more of your bonefish or redfish type of setup, uh, but it's got the drag strength to hold up to not only a bonefish, but any trout or freshwater species that you're gonna see at least around here. Jeff, okay. as long as you're talking about saltwater, how does that, uh, that carbon steel disc combination work in salt water it's not a truly set seal drag right so it's sort of no we i mean it is designed to be sealed but it isn't we don't market it as a fully sealed drag like our sealed drag freshwater sdf series uh, everything is enclosed if you take apart a reel it's actually you will see there's nothing that is actually exposed but for us to market it as a 100 percent sealed drag reel it's just not the case but you know, you don't really need that for what this is designed for. Gotcha. But so you don't have to take any particular special care of it in salt water other than no. rinsing it off? Okay. No, I mean, the, obviously the reel is anodized. The internals are safe. Just like with any reel, you want to rinse it off when you're done. After doing this for as long as I have, I realize most people don't rinse off the reels when they're done. That's just the way it goes. And it's fine. It's designed to handle that. 
And Jeff, um, so how do you how do you pop the uh, the reel apart? I, I, do you have to unscrew anything, or what's? No, no, we made it really simple. It's so it's it's a very okay. So you just O ring type of release. Uh, we actually borrowed some of this from the Ross line, as I said, with uh, like our LTX type design. Uh, there's nothing that you have to worry about this reel actually coming apart while you're fishing it. When you put it back together, we do recommend you kind of just twist it and push and let it kind of those metal balls find their way between the teeth. Okay. Yeah. Right here. So you're not just like trying to smash these paws up against the uh, clicker. And that's it. So it goes back together just as easy. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. So um, in terms of kind of the, the overall what's on the market right now, what would you say this, you know, the via compares to what, you know, what's out there right now? What do we compare it to in terms of other manufacturers? Yeah. Or, yeah. or your own reels. Or, like or, or, you know, yeah. The, compared to the TR. Or? So, it, you know, we don't, I hate to say we don't compare ourselves to other manufacturers. That's not the case at all, but it's, it's in terms of our own lineup, You've got the TR that's a click drag that sells for $3.95. You've got the Via that sells for $4.95. Then you've got the Super Series, the cork drag reels that fall in that five to six range and the SDFs in that, you know, 550, 650 range. So that's where it kind of falls in our own lineup between all of them. It's our least expensive adjustable drag reel. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, so who's what type of customers buying a Via? Um, you know, what are they using it for? What, what sort of applications? Well, it's, it is by far our best selling model right now. We, uh, we had pretty optimistic projections going in to this marketing plan. And right now we are, <laughs> we're at about 150% of our plan. So I guess you could say it is going well in terms of volume and in terms of who it's for, it's, it's for everybody, really. It's for whoever wants to go out and freshwater fish in the four, five, five, six type of range, light salt water. Um, it's not marketed to a particular demographic or price point or, or territory. It, it's, it's a, a really general use type of rig. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you could say it's going to be popular here in the Rockies and it is, but uh, there's a lot of trout fishing around the nation and it's selling pretty well in every region. It's the colors that start getting a little bit uh, different for us there on, on who's buying what. Sure, sure. So I, uh, you kind of hit on, you know, kind of the next question I've got for you. <laughs> so, um, I think the cool thing about the Via is the customization in terms of the graphics, kind of the, uh, the aesthetics of it. Uh, you know, I've got one here. And uh, tell me, this is the, is this the Midnight Fade? Uh, close, that is our Northern Lights pattern. Northern Lights pattern, got it. Northern Lights, yep, yep. So, and, uh, if you hold it up close, you can actually see it captures a little bit of the colors of the Northern Lights. You've got the stars in there. That's all done by hand, just like all of our, you know, our fish graphic anodized. Our, that's under our fade series of reels we came out a little while ago. Uh, and the first few fades were, were cool, but just like all of these fish cracks, we've gotten better at it and they're they're getting more and more compelling as we go. That's a, that's a pretty intricate pattern you have right there. It's it's not so much done with a paintbrush, it's actually kind of blended in and dyed to get those different colors and you can't just put on one at a time. It's a, it's a pretty cool process. Gotcha. So, uh, so in that customization process, you can obviously customize the, the full reel, uh, the drag knob, uh, the the real or the handle here. Um, how many combinations are there? I mean, what did <laughs> uh, how if you if you uh, take all of the different drag knobs and reels and frames, hundreds and hundreds. Uh, if you go to our website, you will see you can actually we call it our build your own reel page. Okay, so you can actually construct a reel on our site. You can put a different frame on there with a different color drag knob. See how it looks. And man, I have seen some really awesome reels that we didn't even think of get built and sold. And uh, I've seen some really bad ones too. <laughs> but, you know, bad is is all subjective. It's some, you know, as they say, one man's person is another man's treasure. It's, it's really cool that we have that unique ability to do that. And we don't stock all of this. Some Most of these are going to take 
some lead time to do because for us to actually manufacture and then stock all of these different colors with the different co drag knobs or handle, it's impossible. So, you know, we're kind of unique in that the customization that we offer, but you know, unless it's, you know, a native brown trout and a five weight, we're probably not going to have it in stock. You're just going to need to wait. Um, it depends. Right now, it's it's about two weeks for a solid color, and it's about six for a, one of these fades or artistically anodized fish graphic patterns. Gotcha, gotcha. I noticed one of the other kind of cool features or kind of a little hidden feature in there is that engraving on the inside. Do all the three different sizes have that? Uh, they do, actually. We kind of we started doing that with the TR model. And on the TR, we had a, the same pattern on all three sizes that we do. With the VIA, we decided to change it up a little. So we have a 4.5, a 5.6, and a 7.8. You've got the 7.8 in your hand, and you'll see that you've got a streamer and a gotcha, which are kind of the 7.8 sizes. Uh, let me, I'll grab a smaller one here. So this is the 4.5. You can see it on my camera. It's got a hopper and a dropper. Mm. At least out here in Colorado, hopper dropper is a pretty popular setup depending on the season. Then on the 5.6, we go kind of in between. Let's see if I can find a 5.6 here. On the 5.6, we've got a uh, both, where did my black one go? There it is. We've got a streamer, uh, we've got a hopper and a streamer on that one. Gotcha. Okay. That's that's really cool. It's kind of a cool little uh, Easter egg in there. That's and like same with my uh, black 5.6. I'll grab it. So, you know, we tried to make it appropriate for whatever species you were going to generally be chasing on that size. Sure, sure. So, hey Jeff, uh, sorry to interrupt. Scott, uh -huh. we did have a question from the audience. Guy Franson wanted to know if most of your sales were on the 7.8. Or do you, do you see any clear pattern? Like We do. Uh, you know, the best seller right now is the 5.6. Hmm. Just because that's your general purpose setup all around. But the 7.8 is a very good seller with a 4.5 right behind it. So, kind of touching again on the customization, Jeff. Um, how does it start? Is there like a base model that you start off with and you could kind of tear it up from there? Or how, do, how does that work? Uh, in terms of the design? In terms of the, the design, the graphics, the, the visual component. Uh, boy, if we're talking anodizing, are you talking anodizing or are you talking actual machined product? Well, more the anodization process and the custom, you know, graphics that you can get on there. Uh, looks like you start with the basic kind of black. Is that right? Yeah. So this is our, our black. This is a five, six size. I know it's sometimes difficult to see. But there's your streamer. Try and hold up to my camera to where you can see it. There it is. Okay, sure. There's your streamer along with your hopper. So black is your base color. Gotcha. Colors. We make everything in black. Uh, and then from there, we make solid colors. If you jump on our site, you'll see we do dozens of solid colors. And those, uh, those sell for $100 more than the standard black simply because we don't do the volume and we got to mix smaller batches to make those happen. Uh, so that's kind of your, you know, you can mix up a solid color drag knob, you can get a fish graphic drag knob. Uh, then we have the fade patterns and those go for $300. Then we've got, uh, that's the fade. And does this fall under the, the fade? Yeah, actually, it's, they're actually 200 bucks for all of the fades, regardless of what the fade is. We don't have different variances of what a fade, like a Northern Lights doesn't cost more than a Baja fade that this is. Gotcha. To make it pretty simple, it basically just comes down to time. The longer it takes us something to, to create, the longer it costs because time is money on this type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Graphics themselves. Those designs, Jeff, are they are they hand drawn? Or are they um, sort of use a template? How do you how do you get those those designs actually applied to the reel? Great question. So that's our brook trout reel right there, our original brook trout. Um, if if you ever see one of these in a shop, 
you put your fingernail on them, run it across there. We, we actually lightly laser etch on these reels so we can get a bit of a template on there. It's, uh, it's certainly not a secret. What it really does is it not only gives our artists a bit of a template to work with, it also gives our customers something that they are expecting to receive. They see it on a website and if it's completely done freehand the next time they get it and they're like, those squiggles are nothing like the ones I saw that I was expecting on my website. You know, you, you, you got to get people what they are looking for. Sure. There's always going to be some variables on colors and some of the paint because they are all done by hand, but at least we're going to get pretty darn close to what you're expecting to receive. Yeah. So each one is in, in essence kind of a custom, I mean, they're all custom, but uh, with the, some of those variations, it might be slightly different from the next one that goes out. Oh, without question, you know, our team is just amazing, outstanding. The patience that they have to hand paint something like a, a bonefish pattern. Mm -hmm. You were asking about a 7-8 before. That's our best-selling 7-8 mm -hmm. that we sell in the artistic setup, obviously appropriate for a bonefish. Uh, there's a reason nobody else does this. It's a giant pain in the butt. It takes a lot of time. And our artists, you know, we've got 20 year artists on our team that have been doing it that long. And it's hard to good, get good at it. It's, it takes a lot of patience. When we, we tell people it takes eight hours to paint a reel, they're like, yeah, right. I'm like, no, seriously, this, this reel took over eight hours to paint. This, is, this was someone's entire day to paint that reel. So yeah, it's gonna cost a little bit more than, uh, than a standard black reel, and it should. We actually, uh, on this last, circuit of trade shows we uh we brought one of our artists from our anodizing facility marie and she was painting reels at the show in front of people and people were like i had no idea and we're like we've been saying it for 20 years that we do it you gotta you gotta actually see it sometimes to believe it and really have it sink in that yeah these are done by hand yeah we we got to see her at the show actually doing the the painting and it was it's incredible i mean just very tedious meticulous and uh, pretty cool that that's all hand done. It, it's something. I mean, it's 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 almost hard to teach. You have to almost have a, a natural artistic inclination. And once again, I go to the patience to you know be happy that uh, what you've done all day created one reel. Yeah, that's that's an incredible the amount of work that goes into it. So, hey Jeff, um, Kyle Napplebaum wants to know what the biggest challenge was when designing the buyer. Uh <laughs> great question. You know. It was trying to make something a little bit different than we made before with more modern aesthetics uh, compared to, you know, round hole stuff or uh, the old kidney bean type of things. Uh, and our design team just continues to amaze us. It's, it's one of the greatest things that happened to the Abel brand was moving out here to Colorado and, and actually working with some of the established Ross team uh, coming up with not just great aesthetics, but actual functionality when it comes to the product itself. The Baya, so what we wanted to try and accomplish was a little bit different than what we had done with our Super Series or our SDF or SDS, where you could buy a ported frame or you could buy a solid frame version of that particular reel. The Baya, there's only one choice that you have when it comes to the pattern. And this is kind of the, uh, what we call like the three quarter on the, the frame, you can see through it. What it does is it still leaves a palette. If you are ordering a fish graphic reel to actually see the designs on it, if you, you'll know it's a brook trout, um, but it still, it makes it lightweight enough to where you could, you know, still have this bottom cool looking aesthetic, but not weigh down the reel with a completely solid frame either. And the majority of the weight stays up on the top where it's gonna be on the rod seat and uh it, and it balances out really well so the the challenges were making something cool and different outside the box for us we we wanted to maybe uh, uh make something attractive to a little bit newer demographic than you know some of our longtime customers it's like get something new and fresh and and unique and uh i think we accomplished it pretty well when you take this thing apart and you look at the spool that's nothing like what an Abel reel used to be. You could never see through them like that. Uh, pretty simple designs, really. Very cool. So, Jeff, um, 
if somebody wanted something like totally custom, do you guys ever get into that or is it kind of whatever's on the, the site builder? Is that what you, you get to choose from? Uh, yeah, I mean, our idea with the customization features that we offer is you can pick the 50 odd plus different graphics that we have, change them around with a different drag knob. If somebody comes to us and says, hey, I want to get this real, but I want to change this color. Can you make it go? I like the fade starts up here and changes to a different color there. Can I go the opposite? Pretty much the answer is no, but there's sure. you know, <laughs> money. <time. laughs> we have made one off reels in the past, but uh, you know, it, to be honest, we don't have time right now. We are, sure. we are constantly chasing uh, a back order list, especially in the artistic side of things, because you can't you can't rush this stuff. You can't say, okay, we need to get double the reels today because we have this many on back order. Art takes time, and uh, you, you cannot push it. I mean, I, we'll say that it's like you know you're about six weeks out from getting it, and usually the answer is, okay, don't rush it. Just do it the way I want. I, I will wait. And uh, you know, if if we were maybe not busy and we had idle time, we could probably maybe play around a little bit with the one off scenario. But uh, we honestly. We just don't. We don't have time to do it. So sure. we try and make enough compelling choices uh, and an occasional uh, a licensed reel or two uh, with some unique graphics. Uh, I can tell you within the next week or two, you're probably going to see another half a dozen uh, graphic choices added to our website builder. Uh, I won't give away too many secrets, but uh, there's there's some pretty cool things we have going on in the artistic side of things. Uh, just, you know, you got to keep it fresh, got to keep it fun, new stuff. Uh, we're, we've done pretty well with some of our new like flag type pattern designs. Uh, we've got a few of those kind of cooked in. Uh, like I said, I don't want to pimp all the surprises, but uh, keep your eyes peeled to the website. You'll see, you'll see some stuff coming up pretty soon. Absolutely. No, we're excited about uh, what, what's coming down the road. That's awesome. I mean, again, the, the stuff that's available right now in terms of customization is incredible. So uh, I'm sure it's only going to even get better. So actually uh, related to that, Clark Ross from Western North Carolina asked if, I, if I've been looking at the able line and interested in real for a size three, four with the North Carolina native spec trout. Or do you offer that? Are you thinking about offering something sort of East, East Coast oriented? Oh gosh. Well, let's see. A, like a speckled trout, not currently. Uh, if it was a maybe talking about a native brook trout, but maybe he can clarify. Well, we did looking. come out with a series. So I showed you a brook trout before. That's actually a great question. So this has been our brook trout for years. It's always hard to try and get it <laughs> to the camera. I got to go opposite. There right. you go. Backwards. It's like flying an airplane. All right. So the native trout actually has different colors than the brook trout. I know okay. they're subtle, but they're definitely different. Right. And it's kind of just some of the advancements we've been able to make in our anodizing department. So to us, this looks a little bit more like a brook trout than maybe the previous pattern did. Um, but yeah, we do. We have it. Uh, our newer fish graphics are a native brook, a native brown, a native rainbow, and we did a native cutthroat too. If, if if I was getting a new three four weight size, I'm a huge fan of the <coughs> reels. I'd be looking at a, one of our new TRs. We do a two three, and we do a four five. So it's it's kind of what you think is best in there. I would it just depends on the rod length as well. If it was a a seven foot, I'd be looking at the two three. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. Jeff, what do you, when you think about how you're going to design a reel for to be a certain weight, I'm sure you've got you've got uh, upper and lower limits that you work within to achieve a certain weight. What is that? What does that look like? Are you saying um, uh, are you oh. going by rod length? You're going by rod weight, line weight? Yeah, all of the above. I mean, it's there's so many variables out there when it comes to rods and uh, you know, you can always ask us. We will we will tell you. But generally speaking, when we when we call something like a four or five, we're basing that on a nine foot length rod. 
So as you get with a shorter rod, then yeah, you probably might want to go down a size to balance it. We know bamboo rods are heavier. So in some cases you might want to stick back to what that nine weight length would be. You start talking the switch and spay rods, you're obviously going to size up the reel to balance that out as well. So yeah, I mean, that's the fun part of fly fishing is it's very techy. It's, uh, um, it's not extremely difficult to learn to a, get that information but there's not a uh a one size fits all scenario uh which helps us yeah. as material manufacturers right there's there are seven weights and then there are seven weights right very different and then you've got click drags or you've got disc drags or you've got sealed drags and you know we try and make something that that will find its way to you with what you're looking for but Man, it's impossible to hit every aspect of every market or you'd have a million SKUs. But they can give you guys a call directly? Oh, sure. Absolutely. I mean, we have five full-time salespeople here in the factory for Abel and Ross Reels. And uh, if you ask anybody, I think uh, our level of customer service is uh, as good as it gets. Uh, we take a lot of pride in that, too. There's a, there's a lot of long-term employees here not just in the sales team, but on the machine shop floor and the designers. And uh, I mean, it's, there's about 40 people that work at this factory and you've got a lot of 20 year employees. This is a, this is a very passionate brand. And we take a lot of pride in the fact that we not only make it here completely United in the United States, we design it here ourselves. We manufacture it. It's, it's done from almost like you start with a goal and then you, build backwards towards it and uh, uh it's pretty it's pretty fun to see plus the pride that goes into it and uh the knowledge and the teamwork it's uh we have a lot of what we call our, our comprehensive design reviews where we will have a dozen people in a room as a new reel is being created or a new product not just a reel and you've got somebody from the machine shop, you've got somebody from design, you've got somebody from quality, you've got somebody from sales. Everyone is kind of coming together to get to a goal that we're trying to reach. And there's some times where one department might want something and the other department's like, I can't make that. It's like, that's not even possible. <laughs> that, or that angle can't be cut. But our design and engineering team works so closely with the machine shop and that they've pretty much learned each other's language and they all have a background in both to where when something is being made, it's not like it's, it can't actually be cut on a machine. It's a, uh, it's a pretty cool uh, relationship that we all have. And, and, you know, the sales team is involved with all of that as well as to like, what, what will the market accept? Hmm. And, uh, what price point do we need to hit this time? Or uh, you know, what does this even look like? So uh, yep. it, 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 it's, it's a hey. team effort from top to bottom here. Before you ask another question, Scott, sorry to keep interrupting you. Uh, <laughs> Clara Cross, who, who asked the question earlier about the uh, three, four uh, spec trout, mm -hmm. he, he asked, he, he got lost. He lost his connection there for a second. Oh. Can you, he's asking if you can hold that brook trout oh, design sure. or those brook trout designs back up for him. Yep. So here is your, we call this the classic brook trout that light isn't bleeding it out yeah this is our native brook trout you kind of almost have to really jump on our website to see the differences but you can see we put a little bit more of a darker bottom of this one mm. and I, I think that showcases some of the customization too because on the drag knob on the one that i think is on your left mm -hmm. has the continued pattern on there where the one on the right has the black so that would be kind of another customization it would be another customization, more time from us to create and more money for our customers to have to drop to get it. But we make that as, as an option. I would say probably about half of our reels when ordered include a matching drag knob. And, you know, to some people it's worth it. To some people it's not. That's why we give you that choice. But you, you look at a bonefish, look at the detail that goes into that mm, thing. That's incredible. You know, like, you know what? I might as well get the drag knob because, you know, then it, they'll they'll actually take it for a photo. They'll take the time to line up the drag knob for the photo too, of course. 
So, uh, <laughs> which makes a bigger difference on some of the, uh, like, uh, uh, our Johnny Cash edition reel. Oh, sure. You don't want to screw up the neck of the guitar and have it all sideways, so. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. So, Jeff, let's drill into some of the technical details. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about the materials and the manufacturing process uh, that goes into making making a Vaya? No, I can't. It's proprietary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. So, uh, you know, it's it's a design that we've come up with that we really like for numerous of our products, and it's a, it's actually a combination. I know they're hard to see of carbon floral polymer and stainless steel discs. Hmm. So we alternate these, they work well against each other as you're tying to, uh, as you're screwing down that drag and you're basically getting pressure. So there's four of them in the VIA, or actually no five total including that. So that's how it would be stacked up. I know it's difficult to see, but as you're cranking down the drag knob and adjusting it, you're actually pulling these together and there's the the tooth so you put these inside of here and that's the shaft that goes in the middle of it all so and then you've got the other two pieces that it fits into here so i know it's hard to see but that's what you end up looking at when it's assembled Got it. And that's all within that uh, that component there. That's all within that component. Yep. Okay. And is that sealed on that end? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> I know that sounds like sounds weak, but once again, I, I don't like to call it a completely sealed drag, but you can dunk this thing in the water all day long. It doesn't lose any drag strength in it. You don't get sand in it and debris and you know, find that you're you're getting a, a skipping drag or a grinding drag. Uh, as I said, this is very similar to the Ross LTX, even the Gunston that we've had on the market for years and years that we know works well. We've had zero complaints about. And at the same time, we make it all in the same factory. So why not share a few components? It's it's uh, it works well. And, uh, you know, we, we also have to be a little bit conscious here of the amount of production that we have to do. And if you start having individual parts for every reel across the board, it becomes impossible to manage from a production standpoint in there and then nobody gets their reels. I think uh, everybody will tell you that, let's say if, the, if they work or run a fly shop or they're an authorized dealer for Abel or Ross, we are pretty awesome at delivery. Guys can count on us. We are here, we schedule out orders, oftentimes in the fall for all of the next year uh, with these scheduled dates. And I think we're pretty rare in that we hit all of these dates at 100% level all the time. And we have for the last four or five years, some people that maybe are familiar with old school Able, myself included, that wasn't always the case. We were not always delivering everything as scheduled on time, you know, and uh, that's an important part. This is still a business and our shops count on us to get them the product that they need for a certain time of the year. So uh, that's that's a big part of it. And I mean, once again, hats off to our production team, our machine shop, our anodizers. Everyone here works their butt off to make sure we get you not only the best product, but we get it to you on time and, and when you want it and when you're expecting it. Because if you have a great product and you can't deliver it, it's not that great of a product. Absolutely. <laughs> and Jeff, just to go back to kind of the process and the uh, materials involved, what, what is the actual frame made of? Is that aluminum? Uh, it is. It, it's uh, it's 6061 T6 aluminum. I don't think I'm giving away too much proprietary stuff there. Uh, uh, it is bar stock aluminum. It is not, uh, you know, a less expensive extruded type of aluminum. It is a, a cold roll feature that polishes up really nice. Um, it's, it's part of the game with Abel. It's, we don't cut corners on any material or craftsmanship. It's, uh, 
we make it the best it can be and the price is what it is basically absolutely so jeff so you know you buy a beautiful reel like this um durability i think that might be some people's concern is you know obviously if you fall you know face first into some rocks you're going to scratch up anything but uh over time i mean how do these things hold up that's kind of funny you say that durability we kind of laughed in some ways hurts us because until we started coming out with all these new models the durability is so great that nobody needed to buy anything again you know they get their able big game three in and i can't even tell you how many times i've had people come up to me at at uh, different trade shows and they're like man i've had this reel for 25 years and it's still my go-to my best reel in the world and we laugh i'm like well you haven't bought anything in 25 years from us <laughs> <laughs> what so you know i don't want to say it. that's why we also came out with new reels and new models but nobody had a via two years ago that's it's it's still part of a business but I guess that's kind of the the silly answer to longevity is what we are known for. These things, that, you know, we kind of laugh. They go from generation to generation, and and uh, it's absolutely true. And I guess I've been here long enough to see it go to multi generations of people. And it's fun to work for a company that you know the product is going to perform. And I don't have to worry about people coming up to me at the show the next year and saying that thing sucked. You know, it, it's all it's all positives and it's a good vibe around our trade show booths and on the phones and in the factory. It's, you know, we sell something that we know is going to do the job out in the field. And sometimes on fly fishing trips, we're off in third world locations where you cannot have anything go wrong because there's nowhere to get it serviced. Mm -hmm. And uh we're very confident sending out reels in the field for that type of stuff too. Absolutely. So one of the uh, things, you know, right now you hear a lot of people talking about the weight of a reel. Um, you know, some of them are so light, you can't even feel them or you know, there's no weight to them. Or, you know, some are so heavy that, uh, you know, it feels like a, you know, you got a five pound weight in your hand. Um, it, what's kind of the benefit of a lighter, heavier, any benefit there? Which, which kind of your take on that stuff? Oh man, you know, a while ago, it was like lighter, lighter, lighter. It's got to be lighter. Sure. And now it's going heavier, heavier. It's got to be heavier because now light is too, is too light and things are not durable. So we are very conscious of what the weight ends up being on a reel when we come to market with it. And uh, we will even have one version of a prototype and say, oh, we got to take like two tenths, out, two tenths of an ounce off on that thing. And our engineer looks at me and goes, where? We're like, that's your job, dude. So <laughs> they they come back with it and they always come through. So weight is very important, but we truly believe you can make a reel too light and mm -hmm. therefore it doesn't balance a rod anymore. And graphite was getting, you know, rods were getting lighter and lighter. So the real guys had to chase the guys to balance with the rods. Um, and then there's the spay market where it's got to be heavier and the switch reel where it's got to be heavier. And uh, we've seen it change a little bit to where people don't want a really, really lightweight reel anymore. They want something, as you alluded to earlier, that they can drop on a rock and not worry about it bending. You know, I can't even tell you how many people I've seen use a reel as a brace when they fall. And while it hurts like hell to get a brook trout reel scratched, it's always going to work. And uh, we always say that the first scratch is the hardest on a reel like this. But even those are so durable, you know, people like I'm afraid to fish that thing. It's like, man, don't be afraid to fish these things. They are they are it's going to take a lot to actually get any kind of blemish on a reel, whether it's black or a fish graphic or a fade or a solid color. It's all the same strength of anodizing um, and they are very durable. The, the, the anodizing itself, of course, is saltwater proof. Um, you do need to be a little bit careful because there's still stainless steel components in our reel. There has to be. Aluminum's too soft for some of the components. And I don't care what people say about stainless steel. There's no such thing as stainless steel. If you don't rinse it off, it's going to get some surface rust on it. Uh, you just got to take care of your equipment, especially in the salt. And it doesn't take a lot of it. You don't have to take that dang thing apart at the end of your day and get a toothbrush in there. It's like, take a hose, spray the thing off. I mean, I lived in Southern California for the first 20 plus years I worked here and I was in the salt all the time and that's all I ever did. So, 
Uh, Jeff, we had a, a late arrival, Todd Tanner, just mm -hmm. jumped in. He said, will the will the bio work well for dry fly trout anglers, or is it more of a saltwater big game? Well, I know you've answered that, but. No, that's a, that's a great question. We made it for both. We, we really did. It's That's why we did the four, five, the five, six, and the seven, eight. So we kind of, you know, we're not hitting every niche of the whole market. We didn't intend to. We've got your light trout rig with your four, five, and you got your light salt with a seven, eight, and kind of your Montana rig with your five, six. So um, when it comes to a dry fly rig, absolutely. Very cool. So, Jeff, I've got a question about, uh, you know, when you're you're loading backing onto a spool like this, kind of that ported spool, um, I've noticed sometimes that the backing can kind of bulge out and, uh, you know, kind of basically bulge out within the, the, the reel, the spool. Um, any way to get around that or any thoughts on that? Well, we actually are very conscious of that, too, when we design a reel, because I have seen that happen before. Uh, if you take a part of Aya, you'll see that they're, they're ported out. But there's enough space in between to where you're not going to have line pooching out, so to speak. You're not going to have backing creating a, a weird looking uh, kind of like a, a thub type feel in between it. So, you know, I love spectra backing because of all my saltwater fishing. I tell people you can put you can wind 50 pound spectra on this type of stuff, that thin diameter. And uh if you, if you feel like you need 190 yards of backing on your trot reel, you can get it. Um, I don't think you'll ever see it unless. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've also seen people catch tarpon on the via. I've seen people catch tarpon on click drag reels too. So uh, they can do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great question because uh, you can make something too ported to where there's too much space between the holes of the spool and you get those weird bumps of your backing coming mm. out in between them gotcha um i have another question here so um in terms of kind of hitting on that too lined is uh line weight um how much does that play into the design of a reel is that something that you guys consider when you're, when you're designing and uh like is this going to balance well with a four weight or a five weight or yeah I, I think maybe a different way to say the ask the question is is line weight your more important than rod weight. I mean, you know, some people like to overline their their, mm -hmm. their rods and so the others do. Do you do you just sort of say, okay, well, a seven weight rod and four weight line, but the rod, I'm guessing, is the the factor because of the weight of the rod, right? It's yep. yeah. Okay. We are uh, yeah, we're we're definitely looking at rods. We uh, we all own just about every rod on the market here. There are certainly different weights of a five weight um and there is on lines too i mean god knows as i've learned a lot more about lines in the last uh year um there's five weight lines that are really a six weight some of them are really, uh, like a seven uh and it's all in the idea of i want i want to be able to load this line this rod and uh let an average angler really feel like they can punch it out. So I'm going to throw a, uh, a seven weight line with a five weight sticker on it. <laughs> right. Right. And then it goes splash and you don't catch anything. So. Um, Kyle Mapplebaum is asking what, what's the largest species of fish Abel's tested a buy on, or I guess what, what's the largest fish that you know of that's been caught on a buy so far? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, He's met somebody who caught a tarpon, right? I I have I've heard of it. Uh, in terms of testing, actually, the biggest species of fish that Abel has tested a via on would be our own internal uh, testing systems that we have here. We'll sit there and spin a via like all night long. It's it's crazy the amount of in-house testing that we do before they actually go out on the market so we put these things in all kinds of conditions and that's something that maybe we couldn't do 10 20 years ago with uh, the machining out there that is available for our own field testing so yeah they're out there in the field that's more for uh, some of the maybe the salt water uh, durability um, but when it comes to actual strength i know it's kind of a boring answer a great answer would be uh, i caught 180 pound tarpon on it um, but I guess I could, if I said one, I'd be, uh, 
I wouldn't be truthful in what I could say. I know we caught this particular one. I I just know I haven't heard one that got that spooled via yet. <laughs> So we, you know, when we do some of this testing, I talk about not just line winders and spinning things backwards. We're doing salt salt spray tests as well. There's a lot of things we can do here in house that we can also get done out in the field. So believe me, it gets done out in the field before it goes out on the market, though. So when you you crank you crank down that drag and put five pounds of drag on a via, uh, mm -hmm. do you do that? Oh, absolutely. And rip, that, rip, rip that line off of there and watch what happens. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the VIA is not designed to be like a 20 pound drag system like the SDF or the SDS is. There's, you know, you've got five of these things compared to twice as many of them, some of these saltwater reels with a bigger diameter. Um, and those are in the 20 pound plus range on those things, but you're also catching giant trevally instead of you know giant trout <laughs> right well hey we just want to uh see if anybody if you have any questions feel free to throw them down in the uh the chat if you're live on facebook with us uh, so jeff if you want to uh purchase a via what's the best, best way to go about doing that where, where are they available uh how do people get a hold of you guys the best way is to go to your local dealer i know it's it's hard to say especially right now most local dealers are thankfully starting to open back up again. Uh, we've got a, a great deal of able dealers around the nation. You can go to our website. We actually have a dealer locator button on our website on the homepage and click on that, type in your zip code. It'll pop up the closest shop to you. Um, and then, you know, that's the best way to put your hands on it. Um, we certainly love to have all of our sales go through our authorized dealers. They're, their partners with us, they stock the product. We want people to go in and pick them up from them. Uh, you have seen on our website, we do have that build your own real selector. So you can start messing around with all of these different anodized graphics that we have. You can actually purchase it on our website at that point. And then there is a drop down menu on the build your own reel to where you can credit a dealer around you that is going to get a credit for that sale and it may not be your local dealer it may be your favorite fly shop in montana that you go see every year when you finally get the heck out of your house or office or whatever it may be so we kind of just give you that option on on who's going to get a, a, a part of your sale because that's that's another part of the partnership for these guys being on our team so we got one last one last question uh, from the audience. Uh, Clark, again, you might have touched on this, but from a real design and material aspect, what's been the game changer for your company versus other real companies? Uh, you know, I, I would say it's it's been what we've always been, and, and Ross since '73 and Abel since 1988 is we make this ourselves. We don't contract out designers. We don't contract out anodizers. We're not having somebody make it for us overseas and we put a frame on a spool and say made in usa it's this is us this is uh from top to bottom uh, and that that sounds kind of silly and like a big sales cliche but what it really allows you to do is control the quality from the start to the finish and it also controls the lead time you're not waiting on a certain vendor to get you a certain part and they're having their own troubles in their own world and and all of a sudden you're missing something that allows you to complete a reel. Um, and the longer we do this, the better we're getting at it. You know, the, you, if you look at an able uh, catalog now on our website, there's not a reel. The only thing that's still left from five years ago is a super series reel. And even that has changed dramatically. Back then you used to have to unscrew a lock nut, unscrew a drag knob, take the thing apart. And now it's all enclosed. So you just back it off and pull it apart. So it really, it comes from the design aspect and it comes from the team uh, coming up with these ideas together and that's probably a little bit different than most other real manufacturers they don't have that control from start to finish um, and maybe not as many longtime employees that uh, have gotten as good at, of it, at it as they are uh, and take the same level of pride in it it's i mean we're in montrose colorado we're about the fishiest place there is in the nation 
there's a lot of other great places, but uh, I don't know about how many are that much greater than here. So we all fish too. We're not, you know, we're not just a bunch of employees that come in and clock in and clock out. We're on the water. We're testing this stuff. We we're thinking about what needs to be done, and we, uh, you know, then we go out and test it. I mean, if you look in the background, my office, you see a pond out there that has got a bunch of fish. That employees are going out at lunch and fishing. Uh, but what you can't see on the other side of it is the Uncompahgre River. Mm -hmm. We've got two miles of a really good river. Uh, actually, no, it's not good at all. I'm not, it's terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fish on that we can go out and play, and uh, it's it's part of who we are. It's we're on a 160 plus acre uh, spread of land that this factory is in. Um, mm -hmm. As you may be aware, we built this factory about, we opened about a year and a few months ago. It's a 40,000 square foot factory that has all Abel and Ross inside of it. And, uh, you know, it's part of, allows us to do what we're doing. We bought, God, last I checked, we bought six, seven new machines in the last year to keep up with demand, but also to keep up with technology. You know, the newer, better machines they make better parts and they make them faster and less, you know, touch points, as we say. And the faster we can make something, the less expensive we can sell it for because it comes within, it comes down to time. And uh, I know, I remember days when there, you know, you'd have a giant set of reels and frames and spools and in the middle department, then they'd be in the lathe department, then they'd go to another department. And now it's, it's a lot more. Uh, involved in, in stuff getting done on even one machine. There's some machines we have, we can stick a puck of aluminum in and it will cut the entire framer spool that you see. And that was like, that was not even heard of. Yeah. 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 Once again, that makes it less expensive uh, at the end of the day, because it takes less time to produce. So I guess that's a long winded answer, but uh, that's kind of what makes this a little bit different than maybe some other companies. And Jeff, I've got one more question for, for you. Uh, so from the initial kind of idea of the VIA to actual like, you know, pr production, ready to go to market, how long was that process? <coughs> and kind of iterations and... and uh, it's generally about a two year process. Two years, okay. It depends on on what it is, but from a con from a conceptual to a prototype to a production, yeah, it goes through a lot of changes from the very beginning. I can tell you the original Via looked nothing like this. <laughs> we changed it quite a bit, and uh, it was great. You know, once again, it was a team-involved uh, evolution of the reel getting to what it is, and then even coming up with a name. <laughs> that's uh, that's part of the game, too. I don't know if, uh, if you've heard this, but Via actually is Spanish for go, as in go fishing. Go outside, get off your couch, go do something. Sounds like great advice. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Jeff, uh, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you taking what, what turned out to be a little bit longer than we thought it would, but really, really great answers, lots of detail. We really are grateful for your uh, for your time today. And, and uh, once again, uh, everybody, Jeff Patterson with Able Automatics and uh, Ross Reels. And um, yeah, thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks for having us on here and uh, happy to do it anytime. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Great questions. Uh, we're gonna continue to do Gear Live on a weekly basis. So uh, make sure you keep an eye out for it and uh, gonna be sharing some really fun and exciting stuff with you guys, so. Yeah, so until next week, uh, like Jeff said, via. <laughs> 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 Let's do it. And don't forget too, happiness is a wet fly line. It is indeed. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jeff. Later.